Got no water. Zwift requires water. Hope this is in focus. Hey, I'm Chris. If you don't know me already, I'm a spinning instructor and I've recently decided to start taking some of my classes online. So I'm actually here in what is normally just a office studio space for my photography work, but I've reconfigured it into a nice little uh, spinning indoor cycling situation. And today I want to talk to you about why I think Zwift is really, really valuable, not just to cycling and indoor training, but to doing my classes. So you might have noticed if you've been on my website or seen a, some of my posts recently, I'm encouraging people to use Zwift, subscribe to Zwift, and use my workout profiles in conjunction with my classes. And I want to explain to you why that is. I want to show you what it looks like and why it's so good. And this is something that I've been wanting for years now. Um, sorry if I get a bit out of breath, by the way. I'm cycling, just a test of uh, the noise of the bike is, you know, coming through the microphone. Hopefully, I'm fairly audible. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for years because when I teach my classes I'm trying my best to give um, a clear message in multiple ways so the tone of my voice and the words I'm actually saying and the, the rhythm and the build-up of the music they should all be conveying one message they should be telling you that an interval's coming not just because I've told you that there's an interval in 30 seconds but because the pace, the rhythm, the uh, intonation of the voice should be starting to change, the music's building, and when all those things start working together... God, I'm going to slow down a bit. I'm running out of breath. Whew. When all those things start working together, I find that it doesn't just become a, a workout, it starts to become an actual enjoyable experience, because your brain starts working on a, a subconscious level, and you don't have to know exactly what I'm saying and interpret what I'm saying in order to know what's happening. So it becomes less it becomes less mental effort for the same physical effort is what I find. And when you're using engaging enough music that gives you that energy, um, you can push yourself a lot harder than you normally will be able to. Now I've been doing this quite a long time and I find that I can push much higher power, um, I can get better FTP results when I'm coordinating the exercise to music. Now that can be something as simple as riding at a cadence, like a, a pedal speed, um, that matches the BPM of a song. That's the most bass form of it and I, I do do that. But I don't just do that in I you know find a random song and then arbitrarily ride to it. I craft the workout around it, so I'll design a profile that has certain cadence ranges and certain intensities, and then I'll try and find music that matches that, which takes longer, obviously. But when you modify the music and mix it together, it just ends up being so cohesive, and hopefully, if you've done my class before, you've felt that, you've enjoyed that, and that's why you come, that's why I do my class if I was someone else, and I genuinely enjoy teaching, and I really enjoy putting together my profiles because that, that, that thrill, that endorphin and adrenaline rush is genuinely enjoyable. Like, I often say to myself and to other people that I do this even if it was bad for me. Like, it, it's good for you, obviously, this is this exercise, it's cardiovascular exercise, it's great for you, but I do it even if it was bad for me because the, the mental clarity it gives me, the enjoyment it gives me, that's worth it. I, I do this, I would do this, and do do this often as an alternative to going out. You know, I don't tend to go traditionally out, you know, drinking, clubbing, whatever, because I don't know, it, just, it doesn't have the same enjoyment as something like this does. Now, you might not be the kind of person that understands that or gets that, and that's fine, but I want to try and convey it the best possible. And I think that what I'm talking about today, Zwift, that integration adds a whole nother layer to this that supports what I already try to do in my classes and makes them even better. So, while we're here, you might wanna have a quick little look at my setup. This is roughly the camera angles, lighting situation that I'll use as my main angle for teaching my classes. Hopefully it's clear, hopefully you can see me. Um, very little distractions, I think. But I'm gonna have a couple of other camera angles as well so you can you know, sort of work out what's going on. So, um, while you're there, I'm gonna show you a wider view. Now, I'm not going to be shooting with a, a wider lens in the class itself, but I want you to see what's going on. I want you to see the context. So, back in a second, and you'll be able to see a lot more of what's going on here. Ooh. 
Okay, I'm back. Looks quite different. Okay, I've got a bit more breathing room now, although I still want to be close to the microphone. Um, this is a relatively small space. So I've got a setup here that allows me to have my own lighting, a little bit of interesting accent lighting, my bike, of course, on my turbo trainer, um, a relatively clean, plain background, my computer, and uh, my microphone, all in a, you know, accessible, arm reachable format. And it should be flexible enough that I can do things like stand up and not have problems. So I'm not touching the computer, I'm not touching the microphone. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, this bike trainer allows the bike to move around a little bit, so don't worry about the fact that it's wobbling around. Um, it's intentional, apparently. So, I think this setup's gonna work for my classes. Um, and it seems to be comfortable-ish. I mean, I've got some lights on me, so it's gonna get hot, but there's a fan over there. Hopefully, it'll sound all right, even with the fan on, we'll find out in a bit. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I put down some flooring stuff. These are these foam tiles that mean that the bike and the turbo are insulated for vibrations and sound. There's somewhere for sweat to go that hopefully is not gonna damage too much stuff. And yeah, I'm super excited. I think this is a really cool setup. If you're interested in the you know, photographic side of this, up here I've got, um, I think this is a 60 watt uh, LED, which is the equivalent of about a 600 watt incandescent bulb um, that's behind a beauty dish. I forgot how big this beauty dish is. 50 centimeters, pretty big, uh, with a grid on it. That's the important bit. So it's a gridded beauty dish, which means the light doesn't go too far away from where I am. So if I sit back, you'll see the light disappears off me very quickly. The top of me here should be pretty dark because when I look at the light, it looks very dark. Um, but when I'm down here, the light should be on me. So it's creating a very narrow spotlight of light on me. The reason I want that is because I don't want loads of light being cast onto the background from this beauty dish, which is making white light. I instead want the background to remain relatively dark because it's a very similar color to one of my COG Cardio's brand colors, which is that dark blue. Uh, this is a fire on ball colour called Downpipe, which I love. It's really dark and intense. So I've got the whole room in it. And um, I think it creates a relatively nice background, even though there's some texture, that uniform colour looks cool, in my opinion. This is another one of these lights, but it's only on about half power. So equivalent of probably a 200 watt LED. It's not a linear scale. Sorry, equivalent of roughly a 200 watt incandescent. And it's got a purple gel on it. We call them gels, basically like a translucent purple thing over the front that makes the light purple. And that's another one of my colors, obviously. So hopefully this whole thing looks pretty cool. Um, that's accenting me around. It's adding a little bit of flare from the corner of the lens. Not sure how it looks on this lens, but on the other one, it just has that flare in the corner. Uh, adds a bit of interest. Hopefully it's cool. At the moment, I've not got my turbo plugged in. It's not even hooked up to the computer. It's behaving like a dumb turbo trainer at the moment. So if any of you have turbo trainers that don't have uh, resistance control or anything, it will essentially behave like this is behaving now all the time and you can still do my classes. So when I talk about being at different efforts and different cadences, you can change down into an easy gear. So I'm in one of my easiest gears here and I can pedal pretty quickly at a very low effort. So I'll take it into my harder skier. So even though the, the tra tra train is providing the same resistance, at the same effort, roughly, I'm going much, much slower now, which means that I can do a slow, heavy standing climb on a turbo that has no resistance control. So if you've got what we call a dumb trainer, or it doesn't have any kind of resistance management on the handlebars, you can still use it for my classes. A few people were asking me about this today. You can do this type of thing. See, slow heavy climb. Fast, easy, flat road. Pretty simple. Um, but if you do have a smart trainer, you can take this whole thing to another level, which is what we're talking about today. On Zwift, we can essentially leave our bike in one gear. So I've got it in roughly the middle, small ring at the front, middle of the cassette at the back, just so it's easy for me while I'm talking. I could leave it in this gear for basically the whole class. Not touch the handlebars, not touch any buttons, not touch a resistance dial, not touch the computer. 
and the computer will communicate to it and tell it when to change resistance. Inside the machine, it will provide more or less resistance based on the workout profile. And that's what my workout profiles are about. So the Zwift profiles that you can download from my website can be in sync with the class. So when you start the class, you start that profile at the same time, you're riding on Zwift, and the resistance will change dynamically to get you to a set power based on your FTP. I've written a little bit on my website about how FTP works and how it translates to what I call threshold when I teach my classes. But basically, based on what you know your threshold to be and how hard you can work, how fit you are, etc., it will get you to a target power that works for you. And if it gets too easy or too hard during a class, you can toggle the mode on and off if you need a break for some reason. Um, and you can increase or decrease your targets by up to 10% mid-class without having to stop. So there's lots of flexibility, and that's one of the main reasons that I want to use Zwift primarily for my classes, is because it's one of the only pieces of software that has that flexibility where you can um, skip intervals, pause, play, which you won't want to do during my class, but if you use it on your own you might want to, um, and you can reduce, increase resistance, turn on and off uh, ERG mode, which is when the resistance controls itself. So. Hopefully, you'll agree with me that it's really cool. Um, I'm going to do some of Ride 37. Now, the classes that I teach live on Zoom that you can book on my website, they use copyrighted music. Um, in the UK, at least, I can um, license the music on what's called a limited online music license, I think. Uh, and up to a certain amount of revenue, I can use copyrighted music in a Zoom or online streaming scenario. But I can't upload that to YouTube, I can't upload it to Facebook, I can't uh, have it in a save format anywhere. So I'm gonna do some of this class, but I'm gonna have to edit out the music and maybe I'll add some other music, just random music. So it won't be coordinated with it like it would be in my class, but hopefully it will give you an idea of how it works. On my computer here, I'm going to load up Zwift, which is not how you pronounce it, record. Okay, let's go. I'm going to disable the audio from Zwift, otherwise it's going to be really annoying. So when we open Zwift, we you know hit go, obviously, and um, it's going to connect to the internet. So Zwift is like an online game. Um, I don't know if you've ever played like a sim racing game, like Gran Turismo, with like a steering wheel and everything. I do that, I love that. Um, this is the bike equivalent of that. But obviously driving a car involves moving your feet and your hands around to control it, Bikes involve pedaling and hard efforts, so when you're doing a, an online simulation cycling game, you actually have to work, which is what we're about to do. Right, so um, on the pairing screen, it's already connected to the trainer. This is a Tax Neo 2T, which is a really good trainer. Um, and on training here, I can select my own class, which is here. Ride 37 hour long indoor cycling class and in the settings of Zwift you can permanently set what your FTP is um, functional threshold power so I if you just if you just go do my classes I might actually recommend not setting it in your profile um, because if you don't set it in your profile it gives you this ability to um, move it up or down so I can go from 200 up to 300 and that will make everything way harder. So if my FTP was 300 watts, which I don't think it is, um, every single effort would be 50% harder in that case. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to set it to about 240. Let's see how that goes. I'll say about, I'm pretty fastidious, I got it right. So 240 watt FTP. Um, on my website, you can look at this profile in more detail. Um, basically, we've got an easy warm up on a flat road. Then we've got a aerobic climb at about 90% of FTP. 90% of FTP is similar to what I would normally call a threshold effort in one of my classes. Um, I use the term threshold fairly loosely. Um, you'll get the gist. You can pick location. So uh, we can do some areas around Yorkshire. We can do some areas around London, or we can go to Watopia. Um, Watopia is a fictional place in the Pacific, but it's really cool. So I'm going to go to Watopia. I'm going to go a whole lot of lava because that was fun last time. Um, takes us around and inside a volcano. It's not realistic, but it's cool and interesting and I like it. Um, if you do this with me, uh, you can add friends on Zwift, and then in this join another Zwifter section, you can you know, say, oh, I want to join my friend, and you'll be riding together on the roads, which is really cool. Okay, let's do this. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to talk about, and it's the app integration. 
there's a Zwift application that you want to download for your phone, that you definitely do want to download because it's cool, um, called Zwift Companion. So I'm going to go on that. As long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your computer, it should work really very seamlessly. All right, just so you can see what's going on, I'm screen recording on my computer and my phone, and you can see me, hopefully. Uh, I've got a fan on, so hopefully it's not too distracting and noisy, uh, and I'm in the wrong gear. Uh, you can drag Zwift around, so I can move the corner of it to take up, you know, more of the screen. Uh, I can move it into a weird rectangle that way, and I can still see what's going on. Um, so if you're only using one screen, which is reasonable, I don't expect everyone to have two screens, but um, if you've only got one screen, you can have Zwift open uh, on you know half the screen and you can have my Zoom open on the other half of the screen in whatever configuration works for you um, so that you can look at both. On Zwift you can see things like power and cadence and whatnot. Uh, so in the top left you can see I'm producing you know 100 watts, not very much at this point. Um, I'm just pedaling slowly at 35 RPM which is slower than I normally recommend. Um, and when you're just riding around on, Z on Zwift, um, it will change the resistance based on your gradient. So this is a pretty slow, heavy cadence because I'm on a free 2% gradient, which you can see in the top right. Um, and that means I actually have to change the gear on my bike in order to find a faster cadence at similar power, right? Just like real life. But that's not what the workouts are about. What we're here for is the workout section. So I'm gonna go on workouts. Uh, I'm going to go on my Zwift workout, which you can download from my website. I've set my FTP to 240. It's a bit higher than that, but I'm going to go with 240 for today so I can actually present, hopefully. And we hit workout. I just realised that I don't want to do this in London. No offence, London. Annoyingly, when you change worlds, you have to close and reopen Zwift. We're selecting Watopia whole lot of lava because that's a really good course. Training, my profile, 240 watt FTP. We hit workout, we can join people if we need to. My phone screen has changed so that now uh, it's the workout screen which is super useful. Even if you don't want to use Zwift's like, you know, visualizations, I still recommend using Zwift for these profiles because the phone screen situation is so useful like what this shows um the, the way it shows your power is really really helpful as i will demonstrate in a moment okay before i start i'm hitting pause on my phone right so i'm pressing pause workout paused because this means i can start pedaling without it triggering the beginning of the workout and obviously because we're coordinating this um to the to the class, uh, we don't want it starting the workout. We don't want it starting the interval until the music starts. And when I'm doing my classes, it'll be very clear when that is. Okay, um, erg is on, which means it is going to control it automatically. It's on 100% bias, which means that it's the FTP 240 that I set before that all the all the intervals are based on. If you look on my computer, all the way down the left side of the screen, you can see the different wattage that that 240 translates into um, in all the different intervals. There's way more than that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the music in a second at the same time as I press go on my phone which is more awkward for me than it would be for you <laughs> okay so I'm pedaling which means it's it's going to go because I'm pedaling it might pause automatically if you're not pedaling so start off pedaling and I'm going to hit resume and play at the same time okay music that you're not allowed to hear I'm going, to, I'm going to turn the music down temporarily. I'm going to bring Zwift back up. I'm going to make it bigger. I said you can make Zwift whatever size and shape you want so that you can uh, do things properly. Okay, right, we're on. It's telling me to spin faster because it knows that the target cadence is 90 RPM and my train is telling it how fast I'm pedaling. So you can see uh, in the middle of the screen, it says I'm at 85 RPM. I'm just going to speed up a bit. Um, I've got my music just muted while I talk to you a little bit. Um, with the music, you'd know better what 90 RPM feels like. This first section's a ramp, so it's telling me that we're building up to 80 watts. Um, so if I stay at 90 RPM, it will get me to 80 watts. And we're just going to hold this for a little bit. Now it's saying 83 watts, so it's gradually getting heavier and heavier. But I don't have to touch anything, I don't have to press any buttons. On the phone, it's giving me a range of power that it wants me in. So you can see that little grey area. It's telling me if it wants me to go faster or not. It's automatically adjusting the resistance. So 
I'm not going to show this entire thing in its entirety, obviously. I'm going to show you snippets of what's going on, um, probably muted because I'm going to put the music on soon. And you'll be able to get the idea of what these intervals look like, what approaching the gates look like on the game, because it's so cool, I love it, it's, it's so motivational. Um, you can see everyone down the right who's just riding on these roads. All these other cyclists are real people who are playing online, who are, you know, on their bikes, putting out power, working hard, hopefully. Obviously, I'm not working too hard just yet. The ramp's building, so now the target is at 93 RPM, sorry, 93 watts, still at 90 RPM. Staying seated, relaxed upper body, nice and easy for now. Okay, we're going to be coming to the end of this little section soon, which means it's going to get a little bit harder. Uh, one thing I would point out is there are a few sections of my normal profiles where I recommend standing. Um, and when you're on a bike on a turbo train, especially if it's one like this that allows a bit of movement, that's good. Um, but it's hard to put down low power when you're standing. So some of the low power sections during the warm-up I'm gonna stay seated for, but if you've got something more solid, uh, you might wanna stand up. Okay, on the game, see how there's a blue gate further up the road. That's when that interval starts. Now, uh, normally that's just a position change into standing. I'm gonna stay seated, but you can see it's counting down. It's about to get to that next interval. We're still at 90 RPM. We hit the gate, we're in it. We've got Zwift noises going on. Um, I'd probably mute all of the noises from Zwift, but you can leave it on if you want, if you want to hear the BPs when we get to the end of intervals. So we can see our target power's higher now. 110 watts, which I believe is 45% of FTP. That's normally what I call a base load. So I'm sitting here at 110. As long as I keep my legs at 90 RPM, which is easier with my music, which I'm gonna turn up a little bit. There we go. Hopefully you can't hear it enough to trigger copyright systems. So, I can sit at 90 RPM pretty comfortably as we're doing this warm-up. I should point out that in these workout modes, it's not going to um, take any note of the terrain of the road, like the, the gradient of the road. That's just going to do its own thing. Uh, you can select your workouts um, so that you can do a route that roughly matches the profile if you want. None of them match it completely. But you just pick a cool route that looks fun. Pick a climb you want it, but it's mostly a climbing class. Like Zwift has some really big climbs in it. So if you want to do, you know, Ride 31, which is an all climbing profile on Alpha Swift, then that's up to you. <laughs> That'd be good. I really want to do that. Ride 31 on Alpha Swift. It's a really big climb. Okay, we're about to hit an interval. Uh, this is normally a standing flat that we're about to hit at higher power. I am going to stand up because the power's higher. Hands on the hoods, standing here. So, target 215 watts, the trainer's weighted up, and you can handle 90 RPM standing at this sort of wattage, pretty stable on a trainer like this. Upper body staying supple, trying to pedal in smooth circles, although it's hard. Woo. Obviously I'd love to have the music louder, but I just need to have it at a level where I can sort of hear the tempo, but it's not going to uh, annoy the bots of YouTube, which is what happens when you play copyrighted music. So I'm not paying as much attention to this screen as hopefully you would be if you're doing it. But you can see when, you, when you're flagging, when you need to pick up that cadence. Okay, we're gonna return to the saddle. Whew. And we're slowing down. So this is where we enter an endurance climb. And it's automatically making it heavier. So that although the target is at the same 215 watts, because I've slowed right down to my new target cadence of 60 RPM, it's so much harder to pedal. So I'm producing the same power, but it's a heavy, slow climbing pace. So this is a 60 RPM climb. I'm gonna remain seated for now. I'm gonna find the rhythm. This is just below my FTP that I set earlier, about 90% of it. And this is what I would traditionally call a threshold effort in one of my classes in the gyms. So, nice to move circles, relaxed upper body, Hands on the tops. You can look at the, look at the road, look at the climbs, motivation. We've got a graph at the bottom. We can see other riders. If you're interested in your watts per kilogram, on the right side of the screen, you can see three watts per kilogram or so that I'm at at the moment. That takes into account how much you weigh, of course. On a real bike, especially when you're climbing, 
uh, your weight makes a big difference to your speed. So you want to put a fairly accurate weight into Zwift when you're signing up so that it makes your bike travel at a realistic speed up and down climbs. Whew. It is a competitive game, you can do racing and stuff, so you don't want to cheat and lie. No one else has to know. All anyone else sees is your watt per kilogram, they don't see your absolute wattages. As someone that weighs half what I weigh, producing half the power is going to go just as fast in a lot of scenarios, especially on climbs. Whew. Okay, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. I won't show the audio at least for this bit while I get into this climb. All right, you can see now that we're approaching the next interval. This isn't actually an effort change, it's just a position change, but I've marked them out on the profiles. So you can see on the left that we're going to be spending one and a half minutes at this same power, but it's a position change. We're going to be standing up. So one minute, we can see that progress at the top. So it's really motivational to know how much further you've got to go until something changes. Music's changing as well to match it when we get there. Looking forward to getting to take it out of the saddle. See the gate, you'll start to see it coming up on the road ahead. At the bottom we've got a graph that shows our powers. I'm trying to keep it relatively steady of course. I hope my fan's not too noisy. I hope you can tell what I'm saying, because obviously this is how it's going to sound when I'm teaching my classes. Speaking between breaths, which I'm used to doing. Okay, we're going to hit that gate soon. Music's about to change. Hands halfway, position change, standing. Woo. Same power, same cadence. 215 watts, 60 RPM standing climb. This is about the slowest we ever go in my classes, 60 RPM is ground zero. So this is a fairly high torque. Okay, the battery and my camera ran out. This is a seated climbing section. So I'm in the saddle. I'm at 60 RPM still. Still holding that 215. It's a steady near FTP endurance section. This is what I'd call an endurance climb, but as classes are only up to an hour, up to this point. Um, an endurance climb in my speak is what people would normally call a sweet spot or maybe a tempo effort, which is higher than normal endurance. So uh, I call this an endurance climb. Well, really, it's sweet spot, which is very close to FTP efforts. We do a lot of that in my classes, and there's a lot of that in Ride 37, which I know a lot of people love. We'll see how you'll, we'll see how much you love it when you have to do it on a smart trainer. Hopefully, more. <laughs> okay, gates come in. Standing, hands forwards, take it up. Whew. Music would have just kicked in, but I've turned it down so I don't get copyrighted. See that gate coming on the road? It's so good to have that marker to visualize, to look forward to. In fact, I say visualize, you don't have to visualize it, you can see it. It's proper visual. Now, see further up the road, there's a red gate. That's because there's one and a half minutes of much, much steeper climbing coming up. So, it being red, means that it's harder, it's going to get really heavy. You can see on the left the different colours, the green sections, the red sections. You can see what the brakes are, what the intervals are. This feels good already. Yeah, I'm sitting at 215 watts, hopefully, average, but I'm at a slow 60 RPM, so it's a lot of torque already. I'm going to try and stay standing, but you're welcome to sit down if you need to, of course. And as soon as you go through that gate, this is going to get a lot heavier. And it's going to keep getting heavier every 30 seconds, for those one and a half minutes until we make it to the end. Let's go. <laughs> it's about to get heavier, next gate. Woo. Remember that gate marks the resistance change. Oh, this feels so good. It's getting heavier again. Last 30 seconds, extra power! Finish it. Come on, just when it's starting to burn, you can see that next gate coming further up the road. That's what you know you're trying to get to. And you can find the extra strength to keep pushing. 
and down. Woo. So, I've not touched anything, but the resistance is eased off, right off. Target cadence is up to 90 RPM, so it's telling me to spin faster. I'm getting to 90, light on the bars. This is a break. We're here for one and a half minutes, which is quite a long time. Get those legs used to that higher cadence. Uh, let's turn it down again. So, we just did an endurance climb followed by an intense anaerobic spike at the end. I could probably handle more than that. I said my FTP is higher than 240. I'll just use that for demonstration purposes. But if you do this workout and it feels too easy or too hard at any point, as I said on the phone app, you can hit the plus minus. You can go up to 110%. So now my target during this break is 120 watts. Or you can go down to uh, 90%. So my target's 95 watts. I'm gonna put it back to 100 because this next section is extremely difficult. Coming up, there are four really tough flat road intervals. Two of the brakes are really short, while one's a bit longer. That's because it's followed by a longer interval. It's one of my favorite parts of the class. 90 RPM, heavy standing flats coming up. Can you see the next gate? Hands halfway. 90 RPM, standing here. Trainer's getting heavy. Power's picking up. Come on, that next gate's in sight. It's burning. 90 RPM seated. Power's coming down. It's easing off itself. <sighs> so power's come right down. We're down at 110 watts. Body's, oh, body's relaxed. Legs are ticking over. Deep breaths. This break is only gonna last another 20 seconds. These intervals compound. So everyone should be able to handle slightly higher power in that first interval. But it's how close together they are that makes these so hard as that fatigue starts to build. Same power, same duration, it's coming up. Hands halfway, 90 RPM. Let's go. Oh, come on, that next gate's close. And break. Ah, oh, so good. Let's mute this epic music. Okay, seated break. Trying to keep a bit of a spin on, tell me to go faster. If you're using a trainer like this, where the power's controlling itself, where the resistance is controlling itself, you can ignore every time it says increase power or decrease power, because your trainer will do that itself, as long as you're at a steady cadence. But if you're using some kind of manual control, or you're using your gears, you do want to watch that, it'll tell you what to do. Next interval's coming. This break was short, the gate's here. It's time to floor it. Hands halfway, standing here. Woo! This is feeling a lot harder than that first one. This is one of the hardest sections of the ride. But the good thing is, we get a long break after it. That next gate, it's not the break. It's red, that tells you that it's not a break. It's a technique change. As we move into jumps, option to stay standing or seated, of course. Hands halfway, seated, up for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Three more times. Come on, that next gate marks the break. And it eases off. Woo. That's so good. This is a long break. Temptations to slow right down, but you've got to force yourself to pick that cadence up, knowing that the machine will reduce that resistance on its own. When you're trying to stick at a fixed power, like in this sort of mode, if you pedal faster, the resistance will automatically get lighter. And if you pedal slower, the resistance will automatically get heavier. That's why this is so good for when you're doing constant power to range changes. See that gate? We'll be there in about 30 seconds. 
And that's the hardest interval of the class. Same power as those last three, but the reason we've had this longer break is that we're gonna hold it for a lot longer. Woo! It's one and a half minutes long. First half standing, second half jumps. I don't know how much of this music I could include, but I have to listen to it. I need this for myself. Hands halfway down the bars. Grip light. Legs at 90. You have to attack it before that heavy resistance kicks in. Standing here. Corner of the way. That next gate is when we transition to jumps. And that's only the halfway point of this interval. Here it comes. Briefly sit down. Up for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven more. Feel those little surges of power as you take it up and down. Come on, fight the pressure in the pedals. This is where the last interval ended. Not this time. Four more jumps, 20 seconds. Seated. Gate. Resistance is easing. Ah, oh. so good. Okay, this is the second endurance climb. Music slowed down to 70 RPM. As you can see, our cadence target is there as well. So at the top of the screen, right at 110 watts for one minute 18, that's the break, at 70 RPM. So I'm trying to find 70 without the music. Seated, taking a few deep breaths. Sorry that you have to listen to my breathing and watch my sweat dripping. Woo! So good. Honestly, this is such a thrill. Even though I'm having to pay attention to, you know, filming and all this going on, this is still really enjoyable for me. If you're just participating in this, you just get to experience it. I'm so jealous. Oh, it's amazing. This is what I always wanted from a spin class, but it just can't give you this sort of training. Having that resistance kick in on its own, forcing you to get to that wattage, it's just something else. Okay, next gate's coming soon. Are you ready? It's a standing endurance climb. That's why it's green. Hands halfway, 70 RPM. Take it up. Okay, I'm gonna ease off now. I'm gonna hit erg mode off, so the game just returns to whatever incline's going on. My computer's about to run out of battery. So, I'll talk to you in a minute without this. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of insight. Oh, that was so good. Okay, I'm probably not in the best state now to have this close up, but hopefully you enjoyed looking at all that. Uh, this is back at my teaching angle, which hopefully gives you a little bit more uh, interaction when you're gonna have me smaller on the screen. Hopefully, because you've got Zwift taking up most of the screen, you can have me just small at the side, at the bottom. Um, this was hopefully a good demonstration of why integrating Zwift with my classes is just so good. Like, I enjoyed that class so much. I'm just cooling down now while I have a little chat. Uh, if you want to download my Zwift profiles, if you go on my website, cogcardio.com, um, and look at the uh, top left, or if you're on a phone, you have to hit the two little lines and then you'll get the menu, and it says Ride Profiles. At the moment, I've just got Ride 37, which is the one I was just doing up there. Uh, so even if you're not doing my class, if you just want to do the profile, you want to do the workout, you can go there, you can download it, it's free. Um, you'll get a profile for Zwift, which is a .uh, .zwo file. You'll also get a .mrc file. Uh, if you're using Zwift, ignore that one. But if you're using other software uh, like RGT or Golden Cheetah and other ones that allow you to import your own workouts, you can import that MRC file and it'll work in a similar way. But I've experimented with quite a few different pieces of training software and Zwift is by far the best for that type of workout. Even if you ignore the side of having um, the, the rider and seeing the gates and stuff, which is what I really enjoy, even if you ignore that, just the training side, just having the power metrics, having the progress bar, having the phone app that gives you that, you know, speedo with the little range and stuff, uh, the ability to go up and down 10%, you can just easily turn ERG mode on or off if you get stuck in an interval. 
like it's all just so good. Um, so that's what I recommend using. Um, and if you have any questions, obviously just let me know. You can message me on Facebook, you can email me, details are on the website, etc. You can comment on this video. Um, if you want to know how to get a Zwift file actually into Zwift, um, Zwift themselves have video. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to show you myself, but um, if you search for it, Zwift importing custom workout, or if you go on my website in the profile section, I've embedded the Zwift video in all of them. It's like 40 seconds long. It's super easy. Um, basically, Zwift stores the workout files in the document section of your computer. Um, so when you download the file from my website, you unzip it by clicking on it, then you'll get the four files. You drop that ZWO file into the section in your documents. So it'll be in documents, Zwift, workouts, and then there's your rider name, rider number. Yeah, your rider number. Uh, and then you just drop it in there in a the workout section. As I said, watch the Zwift video, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then next time you fire up Zwift, you go on the workouts, which I did, uh, you'll see it there. Rad 37. If you want to time it with my classes, as you saw me do earlier, you want to enter the ride, not pedaling. You want to hit pause on the companion app on your phone, if you're using the phone, it's really handy. So it's paused. Then you can start pedaling, just while we're, you know, faffing around, getting a class started. And then when I'm about to tell you that we're starting a class, I'll do some kind of countdown. And then when I say go, the music starts, you hit play, you want to get that as precise as possible so that when that music change happens, you've got that interval right at the right second, which makes the class 10 times better. So hopefully it'll all work out for you. If you want to do the profile separately, obviously you won't have the music. I can't um, you know, resell the music or anything uh, because it's copyrighted, but I am going to be uploading uh, profiles in the future using royalty-free music, good royalty-free music that I'm spending a lot of money on um, and mixing properly that you can do on YouTube anytime and I'll also have profiles you can download for that so if you want to do your own workouts in your own time you can download the profile, you can put that YouTube video on, you can have my instruction, have the music, not have to worry about streaming and uh, it should just be amazing. I'm really looking forward to just doing it myself, never mind uh, the enjoyment other people are going to get from it. So I hope this was fun for you. I hope you enjoyed the look of this setup. You can sign up to do round 37 in a proper live class via Zoom um, on my website, cogcardio.com. There are links to it on like, the homepage. Um, sign up for it. It's Tuesday in a couple of days um, at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. So I'll do the full Zoom situation then. You can download the profile. It's all free. You can do the full experience. If you already have a smart trainer or a smart bike, it's amazing. Come join. I hope I can see you there. And then I'll have a full timetable of classes um, in the weeks following to hopefully take us through this quarantine situation. And then based on, you know, how it goes, if it's being financially viable, we'll see if I can continue it afterwards. But for now, at least, we're going to go with it. I've invested in a smart trainer. I've spent £1,200 on this piece of machinery, so I'm not going to stop anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, even when I'm back to teaching normal classes in the gym. I'll still be doing something. It's just the uh, frequency of the classes and how much I can do the uh, releases that use royalty free music. Depends on how many people come to these classes and can give me money so I can afford to eat and not die. Um, so I hope you can support me. I hope you can come to the classes and I hope I see you soon. Bye.